right, we are joined by winner of tonight's Contender Boats 300, driver of the number one junior motorsports Chevrolet, Sam Mayer. Uh, Sam, you posted your first win of the season, I mean, earlier this year, fourth win this um, season. You've punched your uh, playoff ticket, or champ four ticket, so how are you feeling heading into these last couple of weeks of the season? Yeah, it feels really good to be in this opportunity to begin with. Uh, our Accelerate Camaro, Hux Camaro, was really fast today. It's been the fast last couple of weeks, primarily on road courses. So getting that first oval win is uh, really big. That was my biggest roadblock going into this. Uh, the last little bit of the playoffs is like, we have no more road courses, so it's like less confidence. But we finally won on an oval, and my confidence finally is broken through and feels really good. Awesome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start right over here. Bob Pock, Chris Fox Sports. So if you need confidence, how much confidence or little confidence did you have you were going to be able to hold off Riley? <laughs> you know, so like eight to go or whatever. It was like, uh, you have a big lead, you're fine. It's like clear by 15. And then I look up in the mirror with like four to go, and he's like right there. I'm like, oh, shit, how did that happen? And I, I mean, Kevin was like, I got your mirrors. Just focus up front. He didn't tell me anything about the 98 coming until like four to go. So. I uh, started driving extra hard. I don't think I took a breath the last eight laps. I was uh, pretty gassed when I got out of the race car for the uh, USA interview, but <laughs> it uh, feels really good. I'm calmed down now, but uh, getting this win on this oval going into Phoenix is, is huge. All right, we'll go to Jordan. Um, Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, you know, beginning of this year, there was, you know, when kind of the question was, was like, when is Sam going to take that next step, right? And, you know, it didn't come until maybe the summer. And then you win the road course. Now you win the oval. Do you feel like, kind of to Bob's question, like you kind of feel like you've kind of come into your own now and you're, you know, you've won four of the last 12 races? Is that what it is? Yeah, four of the last 12. Oh, my God. That's crazy. But do you, I and, love that. But do you feel like now, I mean, you're, you're one of those guys that people are looking at. It's no longer potential, but now you're fulfilling that potential. Yeah, definitely. That that hearing that stat is pretty cool. I didn't even realize that. That's awesome. But yeah, that's a heck of a confidence booster. Um, there is doubts in my head. Obviously, any race car driver that hasn't won yet and they expect to win, or are expected to win, uh, you get that doubt. But busting off that first win in the summer, had a really good summer stretch going, and then we kind of fell off in the playoffs a little bit, and busting off two more wins going into that, and then obviously the fourth today uh, finally on an oval that um, the confidence is just building up and up and up and um, huge thanks to the guys obviously they've worked their tails off this year we struggled earlier in the year we we acknowledge that and uh, our race cars have gotten a lot better I've gotten a lot better as a driver I've learned a lot more good and bad um, and it's kind of pushed us to this point in the season where we're really coming on at the right time all right we'll go to Zach Dexter Neal, NASCAR.com. Sam, congratulations. Um, as you look at where you are right now in your career, obviously you announced a few weeks ago you're going to be back at this ride next year. Did that, get, getting that done, signed, did that do anything for you mentally to um, maybe loosen you up a little bit where you knew, you okay, I'm not, I'm not auditioning anymore and I, I, know, I know what I'm doing for the next 365 days? Yeah, I mean... So good, bro. I don't the first, the first win came out. <laughs> the first win came like before the contract was signed or even talked about. There was massive doubt, especially in my head, for the first eight months of the season. Eight eight months of the season. And um, I had no deal. There wasn't even we weren't even close to having a deal. And um, got that first win, started being really strong throughout the summer. Talk started to happen. That kind of pushed me even harder, got the second win, got the third one, and the contract being signed is just a huge thing off my shoulders, obviously, I think more subconsciously than anything. Um, but being locked up for next year and you want to go into the rest of the year like wanting to do a lot and then you can back it up next year instead of just, oh, we'll do it next year. You want to do it now. Getting the win today, did you feel like this was going to be your opportunity, or did you feel like Martinsville was was uh, going to suit your style more? I have been doing short tracks for the last 
five years, six years. Like that's all I've been doing just because of age. And uh, so I felt really good going to the short tracks and Martinsville obviously being the shortest one we go to. I feel good about it. We've had good runs there, top fives, top tens, like pretty average for my short, short track stuff. Um, it's hard because like it's, it's a crapshoot half the time because you can have the fastest car, get bumped out of the way of the last lap and uh, not be racing for the championship the next day. So you want to go in there without being in a must win. You want to go in there solid in points above the cut line at the very least because if you're below it, it's so hard to claw back up. Anything can happen there. Uh, you feel good about it, but I felt like today, this race at Homestead, I had, I just for some reason had just so much confidence going into this one. I've, I put about twelve hours of film work in the last seven days just for this racetrack. I watched every race of the Xfinity Series all the way back to twenty seventeen when Cole won, and um, because I was sizing up my competition. Obviously, John Hunter's been here for a long time. Cole's been here for a long time. These are all veterans that I have to race against. Obviously, the double zero was arguably better today um, but we stayed clean and uh, did our job right and came out with the win back there hi uh, hi hi alex edelman the atlantic uh you you mentioned uh that you've learned some like some lessons over the course of the year some good ones some hard ones i'm curious if you could double click on that and you know maybe talk about some of those lessons that you've learned yeah, I mean, it, that's a huge, broad spectrum of, of what I can learn in one season. Obviously, I've been here long enough that I should know a lot of things, but even people like Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, they're learning something and developing every single day. You never stop soaking in inf information. Whether the tracks change as you go three, four years to them or whatever, but I'm just learning a lot about my racecraft and how hard I can push these race cars because I think in years past I've – pushed them pretty hard and then it wasn't quite right and then I've overstepped it trying to make up for it and then I make a mistake and I think this year I finally found that happy medium of pushing really hard without going over the limit every lap all right Lee thank you Lee Spencer catch fence um so having won this race and you know yes you want to run solid at Martinsville keep your mojo up right but you're still looking for your first top 10 at Xfin in Xfinity at Phoenix. And, you know, 11th isn't going to cut it with those kids, um, you know, once you get there. So do you immerse yourself? You know, do you go back to the film? Do you go back to Sim? Do you just use every possible tool you have between now and then to make yourself a formidable opponent? Yeah, I mean, starting tonight on the plane, I'm going to download the 2017 Phoenix race for Xfinity and just watch it like I know that's not the champ race it's a little different I'm gonna watch every race in the last six years just to try to learn about the racetrack about what they're gonna do everything like that starts tonight and uh, I acknowledge that I haven't been very good there you can look at my truck stats and Arca stats <laughs> they're not much better <laughs> I have a lot of starts there and none of them are good they're all mediocre and it wasn't a lack of effort. It was just a lack of just putting a full race together. Like last year in the fall, we were running sixth or seventh, and we got wrecked by the 18. So, I mean, it's just part of part of learning and developing and putting yourself in a better spot. Obviously, with the Champ 4 stuff here, you have that chip on your shoulder. You're like, man, we're, we're coming here racing for a championship. So that, I think that automatically propels you to be better. Um, but I have to go out there and actually do it. Right over here. Kenneth Bueno, Kaplan News. First of all, Sam, congratulations on the victory. I know it was a huge one for you. Now you're in the championship four, and after this doubleheader, you are the second 20-year-old driver to get a victory. Carson Osvar doing it earlier today for the truck series. So now how do you mentally prepare as a young driver proving himself in this series as you move towards your first bit of championship experience at Phoenix in a couple weeks? Yeah, this is a whole other animal. Like, obviously, being in the round of eight last year, missing the play or the champ four by a good bit because we just didn't have a, a solid enough spread of weeks. Uh, we did the same thing in the round of 12 this year and I was like, oh man. And then we won the roll. So like, I feel like we just have that get after it mentality where we got to We got to go win it. We're going to go win it. Like really we felt like today was, wasn't a must win, but you, like I said, you don't want to go to Martinsville begging for points. So every race that we said we had to win, we, we went out there and won it. So we're going to go say the same thing at Phoenix and try to kick some tail. All right, we're going to go to Dustin and then Greg. 
Dustin Long, NBC Sports. I remember talking with you before you made your series debut, and you talked about all the goals and the extremely high goals that you set. Um, when you go through before this recent period of all the success, when you go through some of the challenges, you know what is how do those goals push you or do those goals hinder you? Because obviously those are, those are very big big things that you hope to accomplish in your career. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I walked into the Xfinity Series expecting the same stuff as the Arca Series, and I think it was just skewed from what I experienced. And I think throwing the last two years away, um, starting my career like in June of this year, like just adding all that back up, I feel like I'm finally starting to do exactly what I planned on doing. So you just got to kind of give me some time. It was the same stuff in the trucks. It took me seven starts in the trucks to win. Uh, I was close in every single one of them, but I finally popped one off. And same with the Arca stuff. Like when I was first getting to those faster racetracks like Dover, Gateway, all that stuff in the Arca car, it took me a year, year and a half to get good. And then once we did, we were unbeatable like Xfinity 10G. So we just kind of go out there and give me some time. And then once we do it, we'll be fast. And I understand there are a lot of factors that lead to whether you're successful or not. So when you look at kind of that point of the last year and a half before you got to this June reset, I know it can be as much on the team, it can be on the cars, it can be on the competition stepping up. Why did it, looking back, why do you feel like it, it maybe a little bit longer reset period yeah. as compared to ARCA, compared to trucks? Because obviously good opportunities also there. Yeah, I think it was, it's just a whole nother animal. And like you look at the cup side, and it's, it's a whole nother animal compared to this. So um, I got to figure myself out too. And I think I kind of came into my own this year, obviously. Um, but if I want to go cup racing one day here in the next couple of years, hopefully, uh, I got to go like three times as hard as I'm going now. And I feel like I'm at my max now. So I got I to gotta get better. Um, right now, I'm good enough for Xfinity. But um, I'm always learning and trying to get better. And I think that this year has propelled me light years ahead. So what do you think of the thought in two weeks you could be this series champion? <laughs> That's crazy. Um, it feels really good because obviously four wins is pretty respectable. Granted, they all came late, but better late than never. And hopefully we go to Phoenix and get number five and a championship because that would be that cap off the season really well. I'll go to Greg and then back up to Zach. Uh, GregEnglecupScene.com. How much of an advantage uh, is it to have an extra week just to focus on Phoenix? Yeah, I mean, I've never experienced it before, so it, it'll be new to me too, but I think it'll help us a lot because obviously we're going to do our best to go out there and keep our momentum going in the Martinsville, but like I said earlier, it's like tonight I'm watching Phoenix racing. I'm My mindset is already there, trying to get better at that racetrack, and we'll take a little break from it and go to Martinsville. So uh, it's just, it allows you to focus on something greater. Zach? You talked about kind of throwing those first two years away and everything kind of away from, uh, but like before June, without going through what those two years were and to where you're, you are now, how does that shape how you view and appreciate the moments like this now where you are uh, the only one locked in right now um, for this championship four? Yeah, I mean, it puts in perspective how, how much you have to work. Like I feel like I'm a way different driver than I was two years ago. I'm a way different driver than I was a year ago. I, I'm constantly learning, developing, and getting better. And I think finally, once I opened up that shell of just winning, um, I was able to soak in so much more information through just myself and all the people and uh, items around me. Good. Brandon with uh, FrenchRace.com. Um, you talk about watching film and everything for Phoenix. Uh, uh, being as young as you are and stuff, you know, where, where's the balance in that and not, you know, I guess over – doing it and not having time to decompress and, you know, focus on, you know, other things while also maintaining focus on the race itself instead of just like being overwhelmed with that. Yeah, I think subconsciously I'll, I'll allow myself to decompress the way I want. I, uh, probably on Monday I'll go out and play a round of golf or something like that. Just, just be in my own space and I can do that as much as I want now because I can just go focus the next 14 days on Phoenix. But, um, I think that 
being the way I am, I can never get enough of video. Like, like I said, I put probably 10 to 12 hours of film work into this week and it paid off. So I'm going to do the same for Phoenix. Are there any final questions for Sam? Dustin? Yeah, I think a big big thing out of it is Homestead is just a very entertaining racetrack to watch. Um, and I watched, I think the first one I watched was 2020, the doubleheader. Uh, then 2021, 2022. And then I started getting back. I wanted more, so I started going back. And I just, I didn't stop because I was enjoying what I was watching. And I was learning stuff as we went. So, plus I was sizing up the competition for what we had because these guys have been around here that long. And... Um, so I'm just soaking up as much information as I can. So why six, six races for Phoenix? Like you said, you got Dustin Tomeko back in 2017. That seems like that's a long period. Yeah, I've already, I've already watched, I mean, this is weeks ago now, but I've already watched the 2017 Phoenix race just because I wanted to. Like, I, I entertain myself by watching racing, and it worked this week. My, it can work at Phoenix, too. Well, that was, that was like the best race that you could watch because that was back when the PJ wasn't put back down for the spring. So that was just kind of learning and, and trying to soak up as much information while I had nothing to do one day. Thank you. Any final questions? Let's go back up to Lee. Just curious, being from Wisconsin, is there anybody there that you emulated out of the, you know, I mean, going back from Dick Trickle on, was there somebody that caught your attention that inspired you to be here? Yeah, I mean, I've been racing since I was four years old, and ever since then I've been focusing pretty much 100% on myself, just trying to be a better race car driver, trying to better myself. And along the way, you look at old video people, drivers, legends, all that. Um, but really, I don't consider myself like a focus on Wisconsin I, I just focus on everything and a lot of the greats are from Wisconsin it's a hotbed for short track drivers and, and NASCAR drivers but um, I don't think it's any different from Virginia North Carolina Georgia all that all right Sam thank you for your time congratulations and good luck in Phoenix